I'm Colin. And I'm Megan. And this is Pet, pet Sitter Confessional. Confessional, an open and honest discussion about life as a pet sitter. Welcome to episode number five, where we're going to cover drop ins. Drop ins is where you go over to the client's house to check on the pets. Some quick follow up from our last episode on dog walking. You want to be prepared. So if you're going to be out doing walks for a long time, you want to stock up on essentials. Like we talked about with the food and the drinks, um, and you want to keep those in your car in a little bag, um, and you want to make sure that your phone is charged as well. It's also a good idea to maybe carry the phone charger in your car with you. And then some discussion on staying organized. So you want a place for all of the house keys that you're going to be getting. Um, I know a lot of people do like a, a b- big board, and they'll tack like a big cork board, and they'll tack. Um, some keys up there and have them labeled with names. You want to figure out a place for all the door and alarm codes. So whether that's a note on your phone or on a big wall calendar, you want to make sure that you don't forget those because those are very important. Also making sure that those are secure and protected so that you are not responsible when they get stolen or compromised in some other way. Labeling leashes is also a good idea. If you're going to be walking a lot of dogs, you want to make sure that if two dogs have the same type of leash or same color of leash, you want to make sure you know which is which. And then knowing your travel routes as well. Didn't give yourself a buffer to account for traffic and unexpected things. And then you also want to make sure that you have a backup sitter to call in case there's an accident, you're in an accident, or there's an emergency. That's always good to have. Or if you go out of town on vacation as well. Moving on into our main topic of drop-ins, a quick note, our platform, or not our platform, but uh, the one we use is Rover, and uh, they standardize and they automatically will do a uh, a set 30-minute check time. But if the client wants more or wants longer or shorter, depending on how many pets that they have, um, those can be adjusted and will need to be communicated um, ahead of time. So you definitely want to be adjusting your price accordingly. You don't want to set just a drop-in price as standard and have and be charging the same price for someone who wants an hour-long drop-in versus someone who just wants a 15-minute quick check on their cat uh, to make sure it's fed and all that. While the services provided during a drop-in are going to vary, um, some things that you're going to want to consider and make sure that you're doing um, are double-checking that the dog is going poop or pee outside, cleaning up inside if that happened, uh, inside while the owner was away, and obviously playing with them as much as possible if the dog is okay with that. Some don't want to be bothered and just want to go back to napping, so that's something to consider as well. You'll want to look and make sure you are topping off their food and water bowl if they're grazers or feeding them if it's a feeding time when you're checking on them. And I always like to refresh the water, even if it doesn't look that low, just to make sure that the water is always nice and clean. What are you doing? Taking a picture of Gunner. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) We have have a dog at our feet who record this podcast, and he's a regular here, so I was just getting a picture of him. During drop-ins, you may be asked to do or administer medication, and so making sure that that procedure has been walked through and shown to you ahead of time. We just finished uh, doing drop-ins with a client a week or two ago, and they the dog required insulin shots. So I had the owner walk me through that process, how to calm the dog, how to hold the dog, uh, and how she administered the shots for the dog, and, and that was very helpful when it came time for when it was just me. Something that I know we like to do is even if the owner will say, don't worry about the litter box while we're away, we will still clean it. That is something that we will do um, to add a little bit of extra value. And that goes a, a long way for the for the owner to know that we are noticing those things and taking care of them without them having to ask. Again, making sure you're giving endless hugs and cuddles. It's not all just going out and doing lots of aggressive or or hyperactivity out in the yard and running around and chasing balls. Sitting on the couch, too, cuddling with them, giving lots of pets, maybe brushing them um, if they enjoy that. No, some, some don't, so you'll have to, again, see how far that can go. We always like to ask during drop-ins or, or other services, 
uh, if they're expecting any packages or mail and to go ahead and we'll bring that in and put it on the counter and let them know that we brought it off the porch for them. Because a lot of times that can be something that people are pretty touchy about is, you know, they're concerned about packages being stolen and that kind of thing. And so it's just, a, again, another thing to, to add and to think about that you can give them while you're taking care of their uh, pets. Depending on what time you're going to be over there, it's a really good idea to think ahead of for when the owner is going to be arriving. So if you're checking in the middle of the day and you know the owner is not going to be there until the evening, go ahead and rotate those blinds, turn on some exterior lights so that they have light and can see whenever they're getting home and all the blinds aren't open whenever they go in and do something. If the client asks you to also walk their dog during a drop-in, make sure, as we talked discussed about last episode and a little bit at the beginning of this one, that you're prepared and ready for that, for the, for that walk and that you, again, charge appropriately. Um, so you can decide whether you want to charge for a drop-in and a walk or just do the drop-in and the walk is included or however you feel like you need a price to make sure that you're competitive in your market is what you need to make sure you're doing. And you can go back and listen to that episode. It was episode number four about dog walking. But ultimately, you just want to make sure that the house is just as clean as when you found it and maybe even cleaner. So usually these visits, the drop-in visits, are done in the middle of the day while the owners are at work. So you want to be sure that the pet gets a lot of attention and gets their energy out, especially if they're puppies or if they're in their crate while you're away, or they're big dogs and they need a lot of exercise and running around. For drop-ins and house sits, you'll want to keep track of your mileage using an app like Mile IQ. It's good to know your mileage so that you can adjust your prices accordingly, and it can also be written off on your taxes. For us, we went in and set a radius around our house, just kind of arbitrary for us, what we were comfortable with, of what we were willing to travel for, for house sitting and drop-ins. And that's something for you to consider as well, so to make sure that you're using your time appropriately and you're getting the best bang for your buck out of these. And also, it depends on your location. So five miles in New York City has a much larger population than five miles in rural Kansas. So you want to think about that too. And travel time as well. So you've been hearing us talk a lot about Orgain. And we really love their products. And I want to highlight a specific product. They're simple, clean bars. These bars have just a few ingredients like dates, peanut flour, almond butter, chia, almonds. They're really, really good. And they are vegan, dairy-free, soy-free, non-GMO, organic. And we just love them so much. Our kids love them. We love them. They're a great snack on the go when we're out walking dogs or doing drop-ins. They come in three different flavors, chocolate almond sea salt, blueberry almond, and chocolate peanut butter. My personal favorite is the blueberry almond. I really like blueberries, and it's just a delicious way to get in all that protein. So if you would like to order from Orgain.com, you'd get 30% off and free shipping with the code AMBASSADOR254. This is an ongoing discount, not a sale that ends. So if, if you order every month like we do, and then you can keep using the code. And it's Ambassador254 for free shipping and 30% off at Orgain.com. So now we're going to switch gears and talk a little bit about communication. So you want to take and send pictures of the pets. So while you're doing a drop-in, you want to take a picture or two or three. And send those pictures and an update of the pets to the owner. And don't be afraid to report bad behavior. Um, if a dog has peed on the floor or thrown up, the owner is probably going to want to know that. And that can be intimidating when you're trying to break bad news. But know that open and honest communication is always better than no communication and trying to hide it. Because if you don't report bad behavior, you will find yourself not reporting more and more things. And that's a, a bad road to go down. And the owner is going to respect and appreciate when you are being honest with them about things that are happening with their dog. Because that's why they hired you, is so that you would be there to report on how their pet is doing. So let them know if something seems off about the dog or the cat. And especially if, if anything is physically wrong, because the owner will probably want to take them to the vet or get them checked out. With apps like Rover and Wag, you can log how many times a dog has gone to the bathroom or eaten. But if you have your own business, you want to be sure to include that in your update to the client 
since they'll likely want to know what happened when you checked in on their pet. Let's take a few minutes to discuss a, a few more things about communication. One of the key things about this is that being a pet sitter means you've got to be great at interpersonal communication. It is absolutely key. As much as you think you are taking care of somebody's pet, what you are actually doing is you are dealing with people. You are dealing with the owner. And so you're going to find clients that aren't good at interpersonal communication either. And that's fine, but it doesn't give you a pass. You're the professional here and you've got to set the bar really high. So this includes active listening, making sure that whenever you are talking with the client that they have your undivided attention. This includes um, being responsive to them whenever they have questions and being timely with that. This includes having proper body language. All of that goes into this and, and can't really be neglected whenever you feel like you just want to focus on the pet and it's all about the pet. It is that, but it's also dealing with the owner. And another part of this is setting boundaries with the clients and for yourself. So can they contact you at 3 a.m.? Have you set those kind of bad expectations already? You know, it, it's different for each client because some a, a client might be traveling to Europe. And so the time differences there will be off. So you want, so you want to lay this out early and often and remind them as necessary to that maybe you have set times that like a lot of a, a lot of kennels and a lot of businesses have set times of when you can drop off and pick up your pet and you know they're only open from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. Maybe you want to do the same thing for your business or just setting those expectations of if you text me at three in the morning, don't expect a response until eight or six or whatever you feel is comfortable for yourself. But that way you don't always feel like you're having to respond immediately. Another part of setting boundaries is don't feel like you have to drop everything just to take a booking. If it's not going to work out or if it's going to be too stressful for you, just say no. Remember, you have the power to say no. You're not at the whim of the client. Although some clients are a little needier than others, some will request a lot of updates and want to be in constant contact with you, and that's okay, but you need to recognize your boundaries and your limits so that you aren't stressed out and get burned out easily. And if you don't want to take those needy clients anymore, you don't have to. You don't have to, and that's something great. Another side to this coin is dealing emotionally with being a pet sitter. You will get attached to pets. You will be so mad at some owners. You'll see horrible living conditions. You'll have clients and pets die. And that is just the, the harsh reality of this, is that you deal with these very close relationships with both pets and the owners. And you really build a lot of trust, a lot of respect for them. And things happen. And, and, and so that's where you really need to make sure you've got a great support group people to talk to, to reach out to, whether they understand it or, or not, just making sure that you know that it's okay to text somebody and let them know, man, that cat that I've been sitting for three years just died from cancer. And it makes me sad because I'm never going to see him again. You know, that's, that's okay. That's okay to do. And this is where coming in, making sure that you are taking breaks periodically, even if it's just for one day. And knowing that you have that backup sitter that you've set up beforehand to push clients to so that you can take a break and you're not taking care of any pets, you're not doing any scheduling, no nothing. It's just, it's just you time, you and family time, something other than the pet related business. And that's really hard to do because as pet sitters, we make money when other people travel. We feel like we have to be available at all times so that we can take advantage of those opportunities. But people take it vacations from their normal jobs. If pet sitting is your normal job, know that it's okay to take a break and step back and take a vacation every now and then. And don't be afraid to refer clients to somebody else. This comes up all the time where if you've got a client that you love and they're great and they love you, and if you can't meet their needs and you, you have to refer them to somebody else, that can be hard. That can, you can really feel like you're, you're betraying yourself 
and that you may you may feel like you may lose them to somebody. What if they like them better? What if they like their house better? What if they like their yard better or the notes that they send better? And you just can't go down that rabbit hole. You you've got to make sure that you're confident enough in your services and know that you are providing the absolute best service that you possibly can. And that's the end of the story. And if someone else decides to go with another with another sitter, know that that's for the best and that that's a decision that they've made because some some need of theirs is being met and that doesn't speak negatively on you. And some clients just love having more than one sitter just in case these kinds of things happen. So we have a client that has three different sitters, one for dog walking, one for drop-ins, and one for daycare. And right. that, that's okay right. because we cannot fulfill all of those obligations to that client. Yeah, and we don't want to have to feel like we need to accommodate all of that because that's an awful lot of work and would actually mean that we would be neglecting other clients or not able to meet their needs. Or our responsibilities. Or our other responsibilities. And so knowing that clients like to have several options and will will move between those should should help you feel comfortable of knowing that you are a part of meeting their needs and taking care of the pets. And, you know, it's just one big community and we need to be make sure, making sure we're supporting everybody um, that's doing a great job and rocking it out there uh, because we need that for ourselves too. Thank you for joining us on this episode, talking about drop-ins. And stay tuned for next week. We have something really exciting coming up. We've got a really great interview with Alex and Beth. They've been pet sitters for several years now, and they are a no home based pet sitting service. So they travel constantly to other people's homes to care for their pets. And it's a really great interview. We cover a lot of different topics. So I really hope you guys join in and listen in on that. So make sure you're following our Facebook page, Pet Sitter Confessionals. You can also follow us on Instagram at Pet Sitter Confessional. You can reach out to us on Twitter at PS Confessional. And you can subscribe to us wherever podcasts are played because we're there. <laughs>